Hello everyone, Madam Z here, your magical life coach and your spirit communication mentor. So I hope you're doing well on this beautiful day. So it is now Wednesday, so so glad you can join me live. Let me make sure that I am recording in all of my social media before we get started. Let me move my microphone down a little bit so you guys can hear me. I should be streaming this on my YouTube channel in my private Facebook group. I'm seeing my public Facebook group, Witchy School of Wisdom, and also on my business page, Madam Z Tarot. So hopefully we are streaming live on all three platforms. It looks like we are. So awesome. I'm going to wait for some people to come in because I know they need to be notified. I'm trying to go live every Wednesday for you guys. So we'll see how that is. I've been um, super busy. I got notes that we need to go over today. Um, hope everyone is doing good. So let's, oh, hey, how are you? Thanks for joining me. If you are here live, let me know where you are watching from because I just moved. So I'm no longer in Texas. So um, my students are like all over the place. So I would like to know how close I am now to my students. Um, so let me know where you're from. I would love to know. And if you're um, checking out the replay, thank you for checking out the replay. Hit hashtag replay on there for me. And um, I will give you some replay love because not everybody can join this in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week, right? A lot of us have families and a lot of us have um, obligations and they have to watch the replay. So there's nothing wrong with catching the replay. So, um, oh, I didn't know you were from there. So yeah, we're not too far, not too far. So yeah, New York, New York. I just did a, um, a Witch Fest USA up in New York. I was one of the presenters there. So you're not too far from me. Well, I guess you kind of are, but... You know, they asked if I want to do the in-person one in New York, and I was like, no, I think I'll just do the online. And um, most of my speaking gigs are booked up already for this rest of the year. I might have a couple spots I can squeeze in. I have one coming up in September that's really good. Um, and a couple other ones that are um, in the works that are booked. I just got to get the recordings done on that. But I am taking appointments for um, speaking gigs next year. Preferably, I'm not, it just depends. I'm not going to be traveling a whole lot next year like I have been. I'm staying pretty much local. Um, the community where I'm at, I'm right by Kansas City. So the community where I'm at has completely taken off. So I've created an awesome community. Metaphysical Fair is going to be starting and um so the community here is just amazing so i'm putting a lot of my time in creating um yeah community yes very much yeah well come on down um community is very much important and um one of the reasons why i moved to this small town is because my spirit guides told me this is where i need to be so i didn't know exactly why i was gonna so drawn to this place but now i know with all the paranormal stuff going on, with all the magical stuff that needs to be created for these, um, the sense of community. And that is why um, I am here in this beautiful community outside Kansas City. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a change from Texas for sure. It is a welcome change from Austin. So I love it here. So, all right, we are going to dive in. And um, today we are gonna be talking about my top three reasons why you are being magical or, you know, a spiritual person um, enhances your spirit communication or paranormal investigation. Um, most of you know that I am a magical life coach. I teach you how to witch fast, powerfully, and to empower yourself through magic. And also a master tarot counselor, spiritual communicator, and paranormal investigator. So I'm all of that and more. <laughs> so hit me up in the comments if you're interested in spirit communication or paranormal investigation. Um, but today I wanted to really talk about um, why it's 
we have an advantage over muggles or normie people when they do paranormal investigations. Um, I have been on a lot of paranormal investigations, and to be honest with you, most of them are not spiritual. Most of them don't dive into the spiritual realm. They don't know about energy work. They don't know about elementals. So we're, we're going to talk about that. All they know about is equipment, and all they know about, they're either Christian or agnostic, which I, I'm not even going to get into that. Yeah, exactly. That's a good question. You would think that most of them would be because that's where they started, right? Spiritualism started in um, spirit communication into the, the um, other side of the veil, between the veils, right? But in my experience, and I've been doing this for a long time, most of the people that you run into are going to be very Christian or just not very spiritual. And I think it's a disadvantage, and we're going to talk about that, why it's important that as mystics, which is healers, you know, alchemists, creatrix, whatever you want to call yourself, that we have an advantage to the paranormal normies that they don't have. Okay. So one of the things that we have an advantage of over them is that we know about the elements. We know about earth, air, fire, water. And so when you go into an investigation, um, and I want to talk about not only an investigation, but when you do any kind of spirit communication, um, you may not even want to do paranormal investigation. You may just want to communicate with the other side, but this is kind of a blanket thing because um, you don't have to do a paranormal investigation. Maybe you want to do seances or something like that and not really go to a, a haunted place. Um, but it gives us an advantage because we know about the elementals. We know about whether this spirit is of earth, air, fire, water, whether this is a gnome, a fairy energy, and a, you know, a fire energy, um, a troll or, you know, a fairy energy. We talked about that. Um, maybe it's just a spiritual kind of energy that's attached to the land. Now, the most investigation investigators or spirit communication people don't even know about that realm. They're like, what do you mean land spirit? What do you mean air spirit? What do you mean, what are you talking about? And how do you know that? Aren't everything just you know, spirits, people who have passed over that, you know, is that who I'm talking to? That answer is absolutely no. You have so many different mythical creatures that are attached to the elements. You're exactly right. Fire, dragons, and gnomes are another one too. I love working with gnomes, but you also have different realms of fairies. You have earth fairies, air fairies, water fairies. You know, if you're investigating at a, um, by a, a body of water, you may have like a, a sea nymph or something come in, right? Or a siren or something. Um, but that's why it's important for us to have that level up on the muggle paranormal, especially when you do a spirit communication, then you're like, this is not of a spiritual plane. This feels more airy to me. And then you can start asking questions or you an earth spirit? Are you an air spirit? What kind of spirit, what realm do you come from? Right? So because we are well versed in that as spiritual people, as mystics, metaphysical people, witchy people, we have that in our back pocket to pull out when that comes up. Um, usual spirit investigation people don't have that. So we have an education on them that we need to tap into. It's one of our given gifts. And um, so when the elements try to communicate you with you, then you know which one you're dealing with, okay? So you're right. Yeah, most people just go in there and, and think that it's just people who have died and passed over, and it's not true at all. Um, you can be communicating with aliens. You can be communicating with ascended masters that are coming through. Um, star seed people, aliens I've ta talked about, you know, um animals that are coming through so you we have this whole realm 
of possibilities that we can communicate with that is just not people who have lived and passed on. So we have an advantage of that. Yep. Good point. Good point. I like that. So number two, and I, if I'm looking on the side, um, um, I have notes so I don't forget. Okay. So another advantage that we have is that we have tools in our witchy toolbox um, that helps us to protect ourselves and to ground ourselves. I can't tell you how many paranormal investigations I've been in or spiritual communications where people have gone into a negative kind of um, situation and all they do is just leave. Or the energy is super high, really staticky. You can feel it and they don't know what to do with it. As people who live in the mystical world, who study this stuff, we know how to ground we know how to transmute that energy. We know how to set boundaries. We know what stones to bring. We know how to smudge our sacred smoke ourselves. We know how to read the energy. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. And also we know what protective ambulance to wear. Um, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know how to ground properly. They don't know what grounding is. Because they don't bring in that spiritual part of spirit communication and paranormal investigation. So how many by a show of hands, how many of you are interested in learning how to do spirit communication or interested in paranormal investigation? Good. It's very interesting when you can combine the two and it's, this isn't the, the niche I want you guys to get into, um, is combining the two. A lot of it's, it's interesting because any paranormal investigation that you watch on TV, they don't really bring in the spiritual aspect of it. There's some shows that I've been watching that are now starting to sage and to ground and to give offerings. That's another one that we probably need to talk about. Um, so I'd love to see that now that they're bringing more spirituality into it, more mysticism into it, and they're bringing more of the techniques that we've known for a very long time. It's probably new to them, but we're like, oh, that's old hat. We've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, that's funny. Exactly. You're, you're completely right. That's funny. Okay. So number three. We know how to feel and to read energy. And this is the fundamentals that I teach in my academy is you have to do your witchy fundamentals and your energy work first before you do anything else. We know when we step in a room because we are already in tune with the spiritual world. I mean, that's been passed down to us or that door has been opened to us. Um, we know how to tap into that with practices, and we also know how to open our third eye and to close our third eye when that starts, the energy starts to get wonky. We know how to like shut it down and open it up, right? And that comes with practice, and that comes with um, actually doing the um, investigations or the spirit communication. Um, so for energies, we can learn or we feel, right, these are all the clairs that we talked about, um, I have been talking about earlier, I have talked about in the past. Um, when you walk into the room, how you feel the energy, or you walk into a house and you're like, oh, I'm drawn to this part. You walk into the graveyard or you're drawn to this grave. Muggles or normal paranormal investigators don't have that ability or they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to tap into it. This is part of the advantage that we have as mystics and witches that have been given to us is tapping into that energy, knowing it, feeling it, and releasing it. So, you know, we have a huge advantage as spiritual people, healers, energy workers, alchemists, witches, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, that the muggle paranormal investigators or spirit communicators don't have, right? You're, yeah. Good question, yeah. 
that was my um, Amazon coming up. So this is everyday life in the in the witch's um, world, right? So it's like I went to um, the most recently I went to the speakeasy, which is interesting. Hopefully we can do a seance there. But um, I went to the Glore Psychiatric, Psychiatric Museum, and I'm a docent there also. So I do paranormal um, tours and regular tours. But um, they have an actual morgue, and it is still a running morgue. It is used for leftovers. If, if the city morgue, is, if we have a disaster or something, and the city morgue is full, and this is like, I hate to say this word, but it's, it's a spillover, right, of um, people who can't fit into the morgue. And so it's still a working morgue. But when I go and try to attempt to go in there and do some paranormal investigation or walk over the threshold, I get violently sick and I can't do it. To this day, I still can't. So I try to push myself to go into there because I am responsible for doing, doing the tour guides, but I just can't. So I just let everybody else go in there and um, I just kind of hang out in the back and they'll read the plaques and, you know, like, and I'll talk to them and stuff when they come out. But that is what well, could be an advantage of it and a disadvantage too, I suppose, right? But when we feel into our energy, when we do spirit communication, we get so many more enhanced um, paranormal proof, paranormal spirit communication, right? Because maybe we are in tune with the air, right? The element of air. And that's the only way the spirit knows to communicate is by wind or by flame and not necessarily through the modern day electronic tools. Because remember, who you're speaking to may not have been born in the day of electronics. And they may be look at that box and like, what the hell is that? I don't know what I'm doing, but hey, I can move this candle flame. I know what a candle is. I, you know, 1800, that's all we have with candle flames, right? So you want to be well versed in spirit communication, paranormal investigation, and bring your witchiness, your magic into it, and not just rely on electronics. Does that make sense? Perfect. Good questions. So if you have any questions about paranormal investigation or spirit communication, drop them below um, and I will answer them as soon as I can. If you are interested in learning some of this stuff and learning the non-traditional way of paranormal investigation and actually how to create a spiritual communication business out of it, I have an upcoming it's six months mastermind for you that would be a perfect fit for you if you're interested in it let me know drop the word paranormal or spirit communication either one below and i will send you the details it is a six month intensive but it is exclusive not everybody's going to be ready for this not everybody is ready to up level the spiritual communication in order to create their personal business and their personal brand. So I am bringing and meshing up two tools that I love. Um, metaphysical business, witchy business, and spiritual and witchy um, paranormal and spirit communication. Those are the two that are coming up. It is exclusive. It is VIP. Not everybody's going to be in. This is up leveling your spirit communication. So you can walk into any spiritual communication I mean, any spiritual event, paranormal, or whether you just want to read for spirits or for pets who have passed on, you can do it for this too. You will have an advantage over 90%, I would say, you know, 95% of people in that room because you are going to be in tune into working with spirit and with elements in a way that nobody else does. So if you're interested in that six month mastermind, send me a message or, you know, put in a comment below so I can reach out to you privately. I, this is going to be a private event. I'm only taking 13 people. Um, and I have to have a conversation with you before I let you in because it's that exclusive. Okay. 
So, all right, everyone, um, top three reasons why being magical and spiritual has an advantage over everybody else is doing spirit communication. All right, everyone, we will see you next time in the Madam Z School of Witchery.